Welcome back to Switched to Linux. So today we're gonna to have a look at the KDE desktop and we're gonna look at KDE on top of OpenSUSE. Uh, just because OpenSUSE is another one of those very popular distros like Fedora that I don't use a lot. And so, you know, and just wanting to have experience in all the different distros, I just picked KDE uh, and, and OpenSUSE for this particular video. Now, a lot of your Linux uh, distros have a lot of the similarities. The differences that you see, the obvious differences in the Linux distros doesn't have as much to do with is it Ubuntu or is it Mint or is it Fedora as much as it has to do with the desktop environment. Now, obviously, there's some truth in that, some not truth in that. Obviously, you know, Ubuntu and the Debian group uses the apt get and, you know, the others will use either yum or DNF. However, uh, that being said, usually what you visually see as the difference has to do with the desktop environments. And so this is KDE, which is probably one of the older desktop environments. Uh, in fact, it is one of the older ones, probably the oldest one uh, outside of there was one, there was uh, one desktop environment that came before KDE, but it required licensing and purchasing and things like that. And so the, the K project, the, the K desktop environment came out of that and that became KDE. So this is a very advanced desktop. It's a very, uh, uh, very modern UI, but it still has a lot of your old similarities like your Windows menus and things like that. Uh, so with this, uh, what we're gonna do is, I'm just gonna do a few of the, the walkthrough things. Now, when I first saw some of the basics of the KDE desktop, I actually didn't really like it as much. A lot of the reason is I work off the desktop and it's very difficult to get folders on here in a usable and functional manner like it is on pretty much anything else. But what I started to look at is that with these groupings here, which are, are widgets that can control folders, you can set where these are at. So on my personal computer where I'm doing my actual work, I'll have a subsection inside my documents folder which has all the different work projects I'm doing. Well, you can map one of these widgets to that folder, in which case you can actually get on there and see that, uh, you know, I, I can have my work in one of these folders, I can have my personal stuff in another one. This one obviously is the main home folder. And where I usually currently have different folders in different sectors of the desktop, I can move these guys around. I could actually do the same thing. So I'm actually looking at KDE and with some of the widgets and functionality I'm gonna show you, I really think it might be the distro or the, the environment rather that I might put on my other computer behind me that's currently running Ubuntu. And I'd keep Ubuntu, but this is actually runs three different operating systems based on how I use it. But one of them, one of them is just an OS I just never boot into. So I'm thinking I might try and make a production computer based off of maybe even off of the OpenSUSE as well, directly on that. So I'm going to show you some of the things about uh, about this this desktop environment that that I think are are different and, and that I kind of like. One of those is that we can set system clocks. So, uh, and just basic widgets and things like that. So over here in the, uh, in the upper left-hand corner, there is a spot where you can add widgets. And there's just a whole lot of different widgets that you can add. So you can do a clock and you can do applications dashboards and applications launchers. So there's just so many different things you can do. What I'm actually going to do uh, right now so that this video doesn't run too long is so I'm actually going to throw a timer on my desktop. Um, so when you're using these widgets here, if you, you can come to the lower corner and drag them around, or if you just hold your mouse still clicking the mouse button, you'll get this box here that'll allow us to uh, increase the size, or we could rotate it, or we have the option to do these guys here are the settings. So you can see all of these, these different items. So over here, I'm actually just gonna set like a, a timer up here. Oh, not 30 minutes. I'm just gonna try and shoot for like maybe eight more minutes. I'm gonna try and be done. Um, okay, so there we go. Now we're gonna click it and it will start. Now I'm actually gonna throw this uh, up here because you know you see the timer's running. I'm actually gonna put this up here where you won't be able to see it uh, because of the picture up here, but I'll be able to see it. You won't be able to see it. Um, 
But the next thing is what I really liked, I actually found one of these themes that I just absolutely loved. So to get to change the theme on the desktop, which is the first thing I wanna do, um, I'm gonna come in here and the actual thing we wanna do is the desktop configuration. Uh, so configure desktop. And then over here under the workplace uh, workspace theme, you can select the, the desktop themes, the, the various other color themes here. And the one I really like, you can play with these. I really like this oxygen theme. Nice dark bordered theme. It gives me some nice colorations. And, and the reason I really like this is I do not like the modern flat stuff that people are trying to put in top of operating systems. I mean, I'm sure there's a reason you know, like one person started doing a flat design and then everybody and their brother duplicated it. Um, so first I'm just gonna switch to a dark theme and then now I'm gonna go back to the, um, uh, to the oxygen theme there. Um, just because I really like that, but I wanna keep an element of, of darker folder settings as well. So now we've changed our, our, uh, our theme. You can come into the cursors here and you can choose your cursor themes. So. Now we have a very nice themed desktop here I like. Um, some of the neat functions about this, uh, if you want to do a search function, you can pull up your menu and do your search. But the other thing that you can do is actually, you can access a, a quick search bar by holding the Alt and pushing F2, and you get a search box at the top, so you can go ahead and just do your uh, search settings here. So the other thing is you can change your menu in, in this environment. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna show, go on to the widgets and I'm just gonna throw a bunch of widgets on here that I really liked and just show you how they work. So um, we're just gonna grab, gonna look around. Here's like an application dashboard. Let's see, drag that over. The application launcher is another item. Uh, it's another menu type item. So there's just a lot of different things. The application menu is the one we have down here already. So we're gonna grab that again. Some of the things that I find useful as a web designer is I frequently need to keep track of colors that I'm using inside of websites. So I'm gonna grab that color picker and there's also a clipboard item. So it will allow you to store different clipboard items. Here's another folder view, and I'm just gonna throw a whole bunch of these on the desktop, and then we're going to look at some of the quick configurations. Uh, if you're doing a lot with media, you can do a picture frame or a media controls right there on the desktop. And the way I envision this working uh, pretty well is um, putting this onto a multiple monitor system where I'm really doing a lot of work on, on one system and I'm using the other one to quickly jump back and forth between everything. Uh, I didn't play with that one, so there we go. So there's enough little little guys here that we can play with. Another thing is, uh, you know, that there's uh, desktop switchers here. Um, of course, I don't have anything running, but you can switch different desktops. First thing we'll do is we'll look at the desktop folders because I added two of those. So I'm gonna hover over here and I'm gonna click on our settings. And then I can actually come down and specify a folder and then come into here and I can say, maybe if I want my documents folder, we'll go ahead and grab that. It should be empty, but I'm gonna go ahead and pick it anyway. So it should give us uh, some empty things. So we've selected it, hit apply. Now you'll see that it's empty. But if I go ahead and come over here, I can now create a new folder, a new text file, an HTML file, link to location. So basically I can put a whole bunch of things right here in my desktop. And then of course, if I wanna change the size or whatever else, I can go ahead and change the size of this and I can move it as well by dragging, whoop, I moved it too far and threw it onto the folder. This is the one thing about this desktop I have not been able to resolve is if I actually put it on the panel, how do I get it off the panel back up here without adding a new widget? Anyway, we'll keep it on the panel for now. I'll show you how to remove it from the panel in a few minutes here. Um, this guy here, I really like this, kind of gives us the um, uh, a very nice modern recent applications, all documents, just a real quick launcher for pretty much everything. I really like that system. 
uh, that was uh, this one here. So if you want to use this, you could actually literally put three menus by, I'll intentionally this time drag this one down here onto the desktop. I'm going to uh, so move it down there. And then this guy here is an alternate type of menu. I'm going to drag that one down here. So here, if you click on this menu here, you might want this type of menu, which I believe might be the default one in KDE's own Neon system. It's a very nice modern, uh, modern UI menu. Or you can use the old traditional menu over here, or you can go with this type of uh, launcher type menu here as well. So you could set either one of those as your menu. Um, so let's go ahead and look at that first. Over here on the, on the far right on the panel, there is a button here which will allow you to configure the panel. So you can add spacers, add widgets, more settings. Now over here, if I do not like that original applications menu, I can remove the applications menu and then I can drag and drop the other ones where I want them to be. So maybe I'll do uh, two different application menus down there. So this guy will give me this type of application menu. And then this guy will give me my launcher type application menu. So that way I can set up two different menus, two different styles of menus. Oh, and I said I was gonna show you how to get rid of this or move it around there. Um, we can drag it around. You can put it there or you can just click the X to get rid of it. So that's uh, in a nutshell how to adjust things from your panel. So over here on my quick launch, I can add a launcher here and then this will allow me to go and find a different, uh, different programs here. So I'll add Firefox to that. I'll come over here, add another launcher. Let's see. Not sure what all these, these guys are. Now you'll see here it'll, it'll uh, make the icons a little bit smaller. So I'll show you how to, uh, how to change with that. Over here we just want to hold down on this and just resize them to the size that we'd like them to be. So maybe something like this looks pretty nice. Oop. Of course, I just goofed up. Some of it's slightly less responsiveness due to the uh, the virtual box running with the screen recorder running. So I have to fight with it a little bit there. There we go. And then now I can move this around. Of course, my timer finished, so not completely done yet, but we'll get close there. So here's just the clipboard icon. I can move this guy where I want the clipboard icon. And I liked this here, the color picker allows me to pick a color from the desktop. And then if I click down here, I can view the previous ones. This is extraordinarily handy as a web designer where I might have a certain color palette I'm working with on a website where I don't have to keep on referencing a sticky note to see what the colors were. I can quickly spot those colors and even, you know, even copy them and such. So that's just a real quick look at the KDE desktop environment. I really like this environment, uh, what it is able to do. And uh, come on back to Switch to Linux to check out some of the other environment uh, uh, videos that we'll be running just to learn about the different desktop environments and maybe how to theme them and customize them a little bit. So this has been Tom, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.